Crossovers nowadays are extremely popular here in America. The Hyundai Santa Fe Sport may not be one of the top sales leaders or gets the most attention in the midsize SUV class. However, you will find that it is a very well-rounded SUV overall and is a pretty good choice for someone who doesn't want to see their vehicle on the road every day. So, let's go ahead and check out this 2016 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport. Now, essentially, the Santa Fe was last redesigned in the 2013 model year. And when Hyundai redesigned it in that year, they gave us two new models. They gave us the Sport model, which we have here, which is the five-passenger variant. And then they have the seven-passenger variant, which is called the regular Santa Fe. And as far as styling goes on between the two, I think the Santa Fe Sport is slightly more aggressive looking than the regular one. However, it's not that much more aggressive and it's not that much better in its driving dynamics. But the styling on the, this one we have here is fairly handsome. I really do love these 17 inch alloy wheels. I don't think the styling of the wheels are overdone. They have a nice right amount of style to them. Now our Santa Fe Sport we have here has the premium and the tech package and it pretty much gives you all of the luxury features you would want like a panoramic sunroof, leather interior trim, as well as heated seats. Now here goes the key fob for the Santa Fe Sport. Love the key fob design, pretty high quality looking overall. You have your lock, unlock, and then you have your power tailgate, and then your panic button too. Now it is the twilight black exterior color with chrome door handles and smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door. Also comes with a beige leather interior. You have your power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar too of course. All right, now stepping on inside of the Santa Fe Sport, even though this is supposed to be the sportier version of the Santa Fe, there's not really anything sporty about this interior, I have to say. I don't expect to find like any carbon fiber trim or anything like that. This is actually a very classy design and very luxurious too. And I especially do love the two tones with the beige and the brown. It certainly gives the interior much more contrast and it doesn't feel dull or boring inside of here. I also do love the wood grain interior trim too. It gives it a much more lavish and opulent feel. Now you do have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start of course. And what you're hearing there is a 2.4 liter four cylinder. Now you do have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Love the steering wheel rim, it feels just right in my hands. Now coming to your transmission, you have a 6 speed automatic. You also do have manual shiftability, however there is no paddle shifters here even though this is supposedly supposed to be the sport version of the Santa Fe. You also do have your rear view camera with guidance lines, no trajectory here though, but we do have rear cross traffic alert. The image quality is decent, but not the best I've seen. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights. Let's do have your fog lights and the hazards too. The driver's window and front passenger window are fully automatic in the Santa Fe Sport. And let's go ahead and pop up the hood, check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors. You also do have blind spot detection and LED turn signal indicators integrated onto the mirrors. Halogen projector beam headlights with LED accenting lights and halogen fog lights too. Overall the front end of the Santa Fe Sport is pretty aggressive.
Now essentially under the hood here we have a 2.4 liter inline 4 cylinder. It produces 190 horsepower at 6300 RPM and 181 pound feet of torque at 4250 RPM with EPA estimates being for this all wheel drive model a subpar 19 in the city and 25 on the highway. Now if you do get the front wheel drive model you can expect EPA estimates to be 20 in the city and 27 on the highway which is still pretty subpar. Now this is your base powertrain for the Santa Fe Sport. There is an optional powertrain that is a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder. Now I certainly recommend stepping up to the 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder as that provides much more power and the fuel economy only drops very slightly. 190 horsepower is actually very underwhelming for this size of SUV. Now pricing for the Santa Fe Sport, the base model starts at $24,950 and then if you want to get the 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder you have to step up to $31,250 and then there's a couple of packages you can choose from like the technology package as well as the premium package. Now as far as competitors go for the Highlander, there are many competitors like from compact SUVs to mid-size SUVs. Now some key competitors do include the Honda CRV, Chevrolet Equinox as well as the Toyota Highlander. The rear end is pretty stylish given as a whole, however I would love to see some LED tail lights. You do have rear reflectors as well as a single exhaust tip, rear window wiper with a rear window defroster and an LED third brake light, as well as a shark fin antenna. Now EPA estimates like I said are 19 city, 25 highway. Total vehicle price for this particular one is $36,355. All of your basic power necessities, power windows, power door locks, and your power mirrors. Memory seat settings for two people as well. Nice soft touch armrest. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Now build quality and materials in the Santa Fe Sport, I have to say the materials are honestly pretty inconsistent and you have some places where the materials feel very chintzy and cheap like right here but it's soft touch. Up here on the dashboard it's a hard touch plastic but it looks soft touch and then up here on the upper door panel it's soft touch and then you have the, more of that chintzy material that's kind of scratchy feeling. Uh, down here on the armrest it's nice and soft touch though with nice stitching but it's just pretty inconsistent to be honest. Now build quality is okay, it's pretty average for the class. The materials are also pretty average too. Everything fits well together for the most part. There's not a whole lot of panel gaps inside of here. The interior trim pieces do fit together pretty well. Now coming to the steering wheel design, I think it is fairly stylish and high quality looking overall. Coming to these set of buttons right here, you have your cruise control buttons and then your dri different driver steering modes. You have a normal mode, a sport mode, and your comfort mode. However, I didn't really notice a huge difference between the different modes. Coming down here, you have your controls for your TFT instrument cluster, which I'll get to a little later in the video. Then you have your voice recognition, Bluetooth phone controls to answer the call and to hang it up. And then you have your steering wheel mounted audio controls for the volume and then your seek and track and your different sources too. And then you have your mute button. 
We also do have intermittent windshield wipers. Coming down here, you will find two 12 volt power outlets, a little storage cubby, nice and spacious, and then you have your USB port auxiliary input right there. Your heated and ventilated front seats for the driver and the passenger. They are both three staged. You also do have your parking sensors off button, cup holders, nice soft touch center console lid at least. The center console storage is pretty good overall. I have seen a lot smaller. As far as seating comfort goes in the Santa Fe Sport, these seats are actually pretty firm. They're not plush. And I would love to see a little bit more side bolstering right here. Thigh support is okay though. I would probably take this vehicle on a long road trip. You do have your auto dimming review mirror with garage home link. And then you also do have SOS Safety Connect with roadside assistant and Hyundai's Blue Link system. Sunglass container. And then your panoramic sunroof. with a powered sliding shade, one touch. Then your interior illumination lighting. Very nice. As far as visibility goes in the Santa Fe Sport, visibility is okay out of the front glass. The A-pillars are a little thick, to be honest. The outward visibility can be a little bit better but when you get to rearward visibility it's actually pretty terrible back there you have extremely thick C pillars and then the rear quarter window back there is tiny coming to these set of buttons we have your blind spot detection button we also do have lane change assist you have your center differential locking since we do have the all-wheel drive model Heated steering wheel, which is a pretty nice added luxury touch, and then your active eco button, which helps save fuel. And then right here, we have your downhill assist, and then your traction control off button. Now, coming to your main climate controls, it's very simple and clean looking, not cluttered with a whole lot of buttons here, and I love how we don't have touch sensitive buttons. Very easy to figure out. Then you have your fan speeds right here, your different temperatures as well. We also do have dual zone automatic climate control. Your front window defroster and then your rear window defroster. And then if you, you press this if you want your dual mode on or off. Then you have your different zones which it shows you up on the screen which uh, zone you have for the air conditioning. And then when you click on climate here, basically shows you your climate information. Like your fan speeds and then your temperatures. And then you have, if you have the automatic mode on or off. We also do have your recycling button too, and your front window defroster and rear window defroster. Now coming to the main head unit, this is certainly one of the best interfaces in the business. It's one of the most simple and user friendly interfaces with bold, clear, and easy to read font. Also does have lightning quick responsiveness with barely any delay. One of the best multimedia interfaces here. Coming to your different sources, we do have AM, FM, satellite radio, and HD radio on this bad boy. Coming to your other media options, we have your optical disk drive with your CD player, iPod integration via USB, and then your Bluetooth streaming audio and your auxiliary input too. We also do have an SD card slot for your map. Coming to phone, you can hook up your Bluetooth phone, have an integrated dial pad, have all of your contacts stored on there and then your call history. Coming to info you can view much information like the XM data, like the weather, traffic, various amounts of things. Your GPS info like your latitude, longitude, elevation, speed. Pretty interesting there. And then you have your Hyundai Blue Link. Coming to your navigation system here this is certainly one of the best navigation systems for user friendliness. We do have live traffic. And then to zoom in and out, you have to click on the touch screen. As you can see, it's just lightning quick in its responsiveness. Love it so much. And you can either enter in the destination by voice or manually too. And then you have your points of interest that you can select from. Then you could display the traffic on or off if you would like. 
but it's getting a little dated to be honest. I would love to see updated maps here. We've seen basically this simple map layout since this system came out. But it works pretty well overall. Now coming to your gauges, I love how crisp and clear they look. And then you have your speedometer over here, for your fuel gauge and your exterior temperature readout. Over here you have your RPM gauge and what gear you're in. Coming to that little screen right there, it's your TFT instrument cluster and basically it's controlled by all of these three buttons right here. It shows you various amounts of vehicle information. Coming right here we have your fuel range and then your average fuel economy data. And then your trip odometer gives you your average speed for each trip which is pretty nice. Then of course you can reset it. Coming over here you have your audio displays what audio source you're on and what song is playing and what radio station you're on. Coming right here we have your integrated compass and then also it gives you turn by turn direction for your navigation system if you have anything entered in on, as a destination. Coming over here you have your tire pressure monitoring system and then your service. Then other user settings like the door, lamps, service interval. Many different settings you could change. But overall pretty good little TFT instrument cluster here. Pretty easy to use with these little controls too. Now as far as driving the Santa Fe Sport goes, the ride quality can be firm for some but should be comfortable for most people. Power from the 2.4 liter like I said earlier in the video is a little underwhelming and I certainly do recommend stepping up to the 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder and the fuel economy is pretty subpar for this 2.4 liter we have here. As far as the handling goes, I didn't really notice a different, like a difference, like I said, in the different steering modes, so that doesn't really matter. The handling is pretty precise, but it's not the most sportiest offering in the crossover class. It's not numb feeling, but it has a decent amount of responsiveness and feedback, for it, especially for a crossover. Alright, and let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. We do have a power tailgate. And then also a new option for the 2015 model year was a hands-free tailgate. Now cargo space is okay. If you're looking for more cargo space, I would certainly step up to the regular Santa Fe. The rear seats do fold down to maximize cargo space by pulling on these levers right here. Very easy to do. Very simple. Then you have your 12 volt power outlet back here too. And then like I said, if you're looking for a third row, the regular Santa Fe does offer that, but the Sport model doesn't. <coughs> Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. Still nice and soft touch on the armrest and stitched. Chintzy plastics on the mid door panel like the front and then soft touch on the upper door panel. You also have a manual rear sunshade back here. Now sitting back here, it's actually a very comfortable and luxurious experience. We do have that panoramic sunroof which gives it a much more open and airy feel. And then we also do have dual map pockets back here, 12 volt power outlet, and heated rear seats two staged. The seats themselves are very comfortable too. I have lots of headroom and lots of legroom, and I have the driving position to where mine would be at. We also do have a rear center armrest with cup holders, of course. So overall, if you're looking in the Hyundai SUV lineup and you don't want something as small as, say, like a Tucson, but you don't need seven passenger seating, you need a little bit more space, this certainly does fit the bill because it's much more roomy than the Tucson. Very spacious back here. I would certainly take a road trip back here in the Santa Fe Sport. These seats also do slide forward and aft and recline too, which is very nice for a much more comfortable experience. Powered passenger seat with power recline. Glove box, nice and damp. 
So with its classy and spacious interior, handsome exterior styling, lengthy warranty, as well as many optional features available, the 2016 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport is a pretty good choice for a mid-sized crossover. However, if you're looking for one with better fuel efficiency, as well as more cargo space, you may want to look elsewhere. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.